Hello and welcome to Archaeologists Anonymous. I'm your host, Sean Sylvia, and today's episode... Obelisks. The fear of being forgotten. Yes, we're starting off this episode serious. Rulers throughout history have put up monuments with the goal to be remembered. And this was across the globe, from Egypt to Washington, D.C. Washington, Washington. Although, the Washington Monument was not put up by Washington himself, which differs from the way the Egyptians did obelisks. In the 1800s, when our obelisk, the Washington Monument, was built, America was desperate to look like it had been around for a while. The young nation wanted to have some gravitas. So it looked to old civilizations like ancient Egypt to give it some weight. There's a lot of ancient architectural styles throughout the city, which I will talk about more throughout this series. So on to ancient Egyptian obelisks. What did they mean? Because we've got the Washington Monument to memorialize our nation's first president, but what did obelisks mean to the Egyptians? Egypt. Well, one of their meanings was that they represented rays of light. They were connected with the sun, the sun god. You know, they've got this straight up and down shape. It's like coming down from the sun. The sun is a deadly laser. And unlike the Washington Monument here, the obelisks in ancient Egypt were made out of a single piece of rock. It's much easier to build a structure like this, where it's all a bunch of different blocks that you can sort of slowly build up than to carve out one giant block and erect it all at the same time. So, though the Washington Monument is a lot bigger than obelisks in Egypt, it is conceptually an easier construction project. So, how did ancient Egyptians build these massive obelisks out of just one rock, and importantly, how did they get them to stand straight up on a base? They started out in obelisk quarries, where they sketched an outline of the obelisk on the rock. They often used granite to make obelisks, which is a really hard but sturdy stone. So now that you've got an outline, how do you chisel it out? You're using granite, which is great for structural stability, but it's really, really hard to carve. So what's harder than granite? How do you break out the obelisk. Well, they used dolerite stones. Dolerite is harder and denser than granite. So basically, the way they chiseled it out was they had a bunch of workmen pounding away with these dolerite stones, which look like spheres, and we can actually see dolerite stones still littered throughout obelisk quarries today. So it's pretty clear what they used. Now, Pounding away at granite with these dolerite spheres would have taken forever, so the ancient Egyptians had a few tricks to speed up the process. One of those was using fire. By heating up the granite, it made it easier to chisel. Even using tricks like fire, this work was really hard and really laborsome. And if cracks appeared in the single piece of rock they were trying to carve out, they'd have to start all over again, and we actually have evidence of abandoned obelisks because in the middle of quarrying them out, they got cracks and couldn't be used. No! So these obelisks required a lot of manpower, which was very expensive and was actually very impressive. If you were able to, you know, get together an obelisk and build it, if you could organize the labor force, you had the money to finance this whole project. Obelisks also had hieroglyphic inscriptions, which often had poets dedicated to a god, or maybe listing the works of a pharaoh, that sort of thing. Okay, so you've got your obelisk carved. How do you get it to wherever you're gonna put it? You know, like a temple, a square, whatever. How do you transport it? Well, in ancient Egypt, they hauled the obelisks by boat. They put them on these wood rollers and took them out to the Nile and then hitched them up to special obelisk toting boats. So they actually had a boat on either side of the obelisk so that part of the obelisk's weight could be carried by the water that it was sitting in. It's a pretty ingenious design and I really like this theory. Okay, so you've spent all the effort to pound out the obelisk shape and hieroglyphs and you have pulled it up the Nile by boat. How do you put this giant piece of stone upright? Well, the best theory is that the obelisk was dragged up a ramp, and then it was laid down across a bed of sand that had been built up. And the way they made the obelisk stand upright is they pulled out a block at the bottom of this sand pit they had built so that the sand would slowly drain away to make the obelisk slowly come down by its weight. 
the way they made sure that the obelisk ended up exactly on the platform that was prepared for it is that they had a guide wall on the side closest to the obelisk. So the obelisk would fall down through the sand, hit the guide wall, and then slide right into place. And then once it slides into place, into a turning groove, they had a team of people with ropes pull it up. But that last step isn't that hard. Once you've gotten it onto the platform, it's pretty easy to get a relatively small workforce to pull it up. So the ancient Egyptians probably didn't have giant thousand-person work teams to erect these obelisks. They did it in a much more ingenious way. This big brain time. Okay, so obelisks are a monument to ancient Egyptian religion, a monument to the pharaohs that put them up, and a monument to the incredible engineering technology of ancient Egypt. So why did America specifically choose the obelisk to commemorate George Washington. You know, I mentioned how America wanted to get some ancient oomph to its civilization, but there's another reason why we went with the obelisk, and it's Masonic connections. The Freemasons really connected themselves with ancient Egyptian stonemasons. So they used a lot of Egyptian imagery in their buildings and logos and all of that, like the pyramid. So it was very much a Freemason thing to do, to take a page out of ancient Egypt's monuments, and of course George Washington had connections with Freemasonry. This giant monument also really stands out in this city that has a height limit. Nothing in Washington, D.C. is taller or even close to the height of the Washington Monument, so it really stands out. You can see it from throughout the city here. So, thanks to the Washington Monument's ancient symbolism rooted in Egyptian obelisks and Freemason connections, and most of all, its enormous height, it really stands out. It really dominates the DC skyline. So just like the obelisks of the ancient pharaohs, the Washington Monument ensures that it is impossible to forget George Washington. All right, that is obelisks. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Sean Sylvia of Archaeologist Anonymous. Don't forget to like, subscribe, watch another video, and see you on the next one.